Hi, in this video, I'm going to continue on the topic chemical equilibrium. And in this video, I'm going to talk about equilibrium constant. So let's get started. Now, last time we talked about reversible reactions. Reactants can react to form product by forward reaction. The product can react and go back to the reactant via backward reaction. So for a given reversible reaction, for a given equilibrium system, we should expect to find some chemicals being the reactant and some chemicals being the products, and they will be mixed together. Now the question is, in that equilibrium state, how much reactant and how much product? Do we expect to have 50% of the chemical being the reactant and another 50% being the product? Would that be more reactant or would that be more product? Well, actually, it depends on, first of all, the reaction itself or the equilibrium system itself. And secondly, it depends on the condition that we are provided to the equilibrium system. Now, let's just give you two examples. The first example is the ionization of ethanol acid in water. So CH3COOH ionized in water to form COO minus and H plus. Now you notice that I intentionally make the reversible sign like this. Actually, this represents that the backward reaction occurs at a much greater extent than the forward reaction. In reality, you know that ethanol acid partially ionized in water, and by partially, in reality, we are expecting to have, for every 1,000 molecules of ethanol acid, only one of them actually ionized. So you can tell, <coughs> at equilibrium, the majority of the chemicals actually exist as the molecular form of ethanol acid. Only very few exist as ions. So in this equilibrium system, you can tell you have much more reactant than product. Now, we will describe this situation as the equilibrium favoring the reactant than the product. Okay? Now, another example would be the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. When we provide sufficient heating to the calcium carbonate, then we will expect the majority of the calcium carbonate will decompose to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. In this case, I will use this representation for the reversible sign because this time the equilibrium favors the product side. That means at equilibrium state, we will expect to see the majority of the chemicals being the product than the reactant. So, this shows you that for different reactions, the equilibrium could be favoring the product, could be favoring the reactant. But how can we quantitatively show to the others the extent how much the equilibrium favors the product side or how much the equilibrium favors the reactant side? So here, that's why we need to know the equilibrium constant. This equilibrium constant, as you can tell, is a constant so it is a number that is not going to change except for temperature. So here you see the equilibrium law states that the equilibrium constant at equilibrium is a constant, of course, at a given temperature. So when temperature is constant, then the Kc for a particular reaction is constant, no matter what concentration you use, no matter what pressure you exerted to the system, okay? Now, equilibrium constant, the symbol is Kc. Bear in mind, because we will be using this very often. Now, let's just look at this um, example. We have a reversible reaction, so um, all the capital letter representing chemicals and all the lower case are representing the stoichiometry. That means the mole ratio of each reactant and product. Okay, so the Kc, as you can see from here, the Kc is actually calculated by looking at the ratio of the product concentration and the reacting concentration at equilibrium. Now, very important, at equilibrium. Okay, which is written like this. Now, you see very uh, complicated, but you notice that 
it is actually a ratio or a fraction number. So as the numerator, it is actually the product concentration multiplied together. And at the denominator, it is basically the reacting concentration multiplied together. Now the EQM here basically emphasizes that we are looking at the equilibrium concentration. Okay? Now you notice the lower case are written as the power or as the index of each concentration. Um, so for example, if I just make up some numbers, if this one is one, this one is two, this one is three, this one is four. Okay? So that means it will become A plus 2B forming 3P and 4Q. If this is the case, then the KC will be written as so product concentration at the top, so P EQM, Q EQM over A EQM and then B EQM. So product concentration over reacting concentration. And then we also have to add the stoichiometry. So here, one, two, three, four. So here, one, you don't have to put down one here. So two, you need to put down square, okay? Square. And three, that would be cube. And here, four, so to the power four. So this is how you express the equilibrium constant, okay? Remember, product concentration over reacting concentration. And we also have to fit in the stoichiometry, okay? Now down here, again, highlight some key points. So Kc is temperature dependent. Like I said, Kc is a value that is a constant for each chemical reaction, provided that temperature is the same. Meaning that if the temperature has changed, then the value of Kc will also change. Now here, temperature dependent, meaning that value will not change except when temperature is changed, okay? Now also pay attention to the unit of Kc. It depends on the stoichiometry of the reactant and the product, okay? So let me give you an example down here. Points to no part, okay? So let's just say I have a reversible reaction like A reacts with 2B to form let's just say um, C, okay? Then the Kc, if you remember, it is the product concentration to C over the reacting concentration Okay, just like this. Okay, so essentially we have one concentration divided by one, two, three, three concentrations. So the unit for one concentration would be mole per dm cube, right? And over here we have mole per dm cube, mole per dm cube, mole per dm cube. We have three mole per dm cube multiplied together. So that would become mole to the power three dm to the power negative 9, okay? Because when we have to multiply the index together, uh, it's mathematics, we add them together. So we have the mole to the power cube because we have mole to the power 1 times mole to the power 1 times mole to the power 1. So that would become mole 1 plus 1 plus 1, which has become mole to the power 3, okay? Similarly, we have dm to the power negative 3 multiplied by dm to the power negative 3 multiplied by dm to the power negative 3. So that would become plus negative 3 plus negative 3. So at the end, we have dm to the power negative 9. Okay? So it's actually mathematics. Now, so when you have one concentration at the numerator, three concentrations at the denominator, now, they are multiplied, they are divided together, right? Divided by one another. So, we also have to subtract <coughs> the index. So here, actually this is one over here, right? So, mole divided by 
moku that basically gives you mo okay to the power negative two okay and over here dm to the power negative three divided by dm to the power negative nine actually gives you dm to the power six okay hey how did you do that while you do so over here you do mo one minus three and there dm you do negative three minus negative nine so this is how you determine the units for the kc okay so here mo to the power negative two dm to the power negative six to the power six okay now let's also look at the worked example the worked example at the top so here we have a reversible reaction copper 2 plus reacts with four moles of chloride ion to form a complex ion and kc is given as product over reactant remember there are four chloride so it is to the power four and the unit is dm to the power 12 mole to the power negative four because we have one concentration divided by altogether five concentrations so here the four is given by one minus five and the 12 here is given by negative 3 minus negative 15 okay so this is how it works so do pay attention to how to express kc and how we determine the unit because these questions are frequently asked in the public exam okay now let's go to the next page now there are some remarks regarding uh, the expression of equilibrium constant so for the concentration of reactant or product there are two situations where the concentration can be neglected can be taken away from the equation or from the expression so the first situation is when the reactant or the product is a solid for example here this is the uh, thermal decomposition of sodium hydrogen carbonate like basically the baking powder um, if you want to put down uh, the Kc, then supposedly what you may think of would be uh, Na2CO3 and then CO2 and then H2O divided by NaHCO32. Now, this might be what you thought, but since these two are solid, these two are solid, therefore, they can be cancelled out so at the end kc would be simply carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide and water okay uh, if you want to know why it's because uh, for a solid even though they are being consumed their concentration remain the same okay uh, you may ask what is the concentration of a solid now concentration is essentially number of mole divided by volume right so when a solid is is, is huge huh? okay then the, of course you have quite a lot of moles of particles and it occupies a certain volume so let's just say half of it is being consumed in. then of course you expect the solid to be smaller to be smaller uh, as you have less number of more particles you also have a smaller volume so you notice the concentration doesn't change even though it is being reacted so that's why concentration of a solid is taken away from the expression now the second situation is when your reactant or the product is as well a solvent a solvent usually we are talking about water now for example this one again is the uh, ionization of ethanol acid in water so the equation can be written like this when you put down the kc expression then you will have product over reactant but you notice the concentration of water is omitted because water is also acting as a solvent now as a solvent the quantity must be much 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 larger than the uh, solute or the reactant themselves so the concentration of water should be remain unchanged even though it participate in the reaction so that's why okay concentration of water is neglected or omitted from the KC expression Okay. 
Now down here, we have some practice question. Again, pause the video and attempt it yourself. Basically, for these reactions, you want to put down the expression for Kc, and you also want to have the unit of Kc. Okay? Now let's go over the answers. The first one, Kc, you will have product over reactant. Now the EQM is optional, okay? The unit will be dm cube mole to the power negative 1, okay? You can also have mole to the power negative 1 dm cube, okay? But it's just my personal habit that I would like to put the positive index at the beginning, okay? Now this one, Kc equals to FeSCN2 plus divided by Fe3 plus SCN minus okay and this one the unit is again dm cube per mole now see there um, this one kc equals to you have pocl3 eqm to the power 10 over p4010 eqm and then pcl5 to the power 6 EQM. So the units of Kc, 10 concentration at the top, 7 concentration at the bottom. So you have mole to the power negative 3 dm, sorry, mole to the power 3 dm to the power negative 9. Okay, this one. Okay. Now D, Kc equals to, now pay attention, AgBr is a solid. So the solid concentration can be omitted. So you simply do Ag plus EQM multiplied by Br minus EQM. So the concentration is basically mole square dm to the power negative 6. Okay? For E, this one. You notice that this is the uh, ionization of ammonia in water. So water is not only acting as a reactant, but it also acts as a solvent. So here, Kc equals to ammonium ion EQM hydroxide EQM over only ammonia EQM. So you don't have to include the water. So the unit for Kc will be mole per dm cubed. Okay? Now F. F, you notice this is the esterification of uh, ethanoic acid and ethanol, and in this case methanol. Okay, so this one, Kc. Now you may ask, you may think, hey, water uh, is a solvent, so it can be removed. But think carefully. You notice that actually this is an organic reaction, and we are simply mixing two organic liquids together, heat under reflux. So Water is actually a product, not the solvent, okay? So this time you cannot get rid of the water. You need to include the water in the expression. Okay? Now, what is the unit? See, two concentration divided by two concentration, so no unit. Yes, Kc can be no unit if it happens that the concentration of uh, the product is the same as the, con I mean, the unit is the same, okay? So that's the idea. Now, next page. Relationship between Kc values. So here is simply some mathematics tricks. Um, if you're good at math, then this will be very easy. Now you notice uh, we have two reversible reaction, and if you watch it carefully, you realize that actually the second one is basically the first one, but you flip the direction. You flip the direction. Okay. So if you put down the Kc expression for both reversible reaction. So Kc1 corresponds to the first one, then you have uh, the product over reactant, that's it. The second one, so you do something similar, 
and actually you can tell the two expression is basically the reciprocal of one another okay so if you take one over this expression you will get this expression isn't it so here you see kc1 equals to 1 over kc2 okay but this one sometimes in exam that would be a multiple choice question asking you to kind of manipulate the kc value but to be honest it is simply mathematics tricks okay now down here uh, this is something i feel like uh, quite important the magnitude of equilibrium constant um, just now at the beginning uh, i said that equilibrium constant is used to quantitatively show to people for a given equilibrium system um, whether the equilibrium favors the forward reaction or it favors the backward reaction or in other words do you expect to have more products or more reactant okay um, so here the magnitude of equilibrium constant kind of hints towards the extent of forward or backward reaction or kind of hints towards whether you have many products or many reactant so like i said kc uh, let me put it down kc is essentially product concentration over reactant concentration right so you think about it if you have a huge kc if you have a huge kc that means if you look into the fraction that means you have a lot of products and very few reactant right so that means a large kc basically tells you that the reaction go all the way to the product side go all the way to the right hand side almost uh, so the equilibrium favors the forward reaction a lot okay on the other hand if you are given a, an equilibrium system where kc is very very small so a small kc tells you that the product concentration is very low and at the same time the reacting concentration is very high isn't it so a small kc tells you that the reaction actually hardly proceed or you can say the equilibrium favors the backward reaction and for that equilibrium system you should be expecting to see a huge concentration of of reactant and very little concentration of product okay so here a large kc means that there are more product than the reactant at equilibrium now it may not necessarily be bigger than one uh, but simply tells you that a large kc may be a thousand maybe a hundred uh, you basically tells you that the reaction favor okay to the forward i mean the forward reaction is more favored and the equilibrium position is more towards the product side okay and the small kc basically tells you more reactant than the product at equilibrium so backward reaction is favored the equilibrium position is more to the reactant side okay so this is how we can deduce the extent of reaction based on the kc based on the magnitude of the kc okay now on the right hand side we have a quick practice question so again pause the video and attempt this question and then resume the video to check the answers okay let's have a look now we have two reversible reaction reaction a reaction b okay and if you are smart you realize that a is the opposite of b it's just flipping a then you get b okay now the equilibrium constant of reaction a and b are ka and kb respectively okay at certain condition the value of ka is 200 but we do not have the units of uh, ka now write down the expression of ka and state its unit the ka you have the product over reactant isn't it so the product concentration you have co gas eqm and then h2 gas eqm to the power 3 over ch4 gas eqm and now here water is a gas it is definitely not a solvent so you need to include that in your equation so that would be the 
uh, equilibrium constant expression. So the unit is get four concentration over two concentration, so you register mole square dm to the power negative six. Okay? Now B, explain whether forward or backward reaction of reaction A occurs at a greater extent. Now, you see, the value of Ka is 200, so since the magnitude of Ka is much larger than 1, so forward reaction occurs to a greater extent okay so you need to compare the magnitude of ka all right now kb calculate kb so like i said uh, kb is basically ka but flipped so kb equals to the reciprocal of ka just now we mentioned about that so it's 1 over ka so it's 1 over 200 okay of course you need to tap the calculator to get the actual value so 5 times 10 to the power negative 3 okay wait a minute it's not yet done what about the unit now the unit should it be the same of course not the unit should be also flipped so here the unit should be dm6 mole to the power negative 2 okay so that's the end of this video